in honor of the Native American week um, and really looking at our indigenous people, there's a couple of songs um, that uh, I have a really a, a feel to them that feels to me uh, a little bit more uh, Native American. This one is uh, 2256 in the Faith We Sing book called Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. It's really, normally I would play it with uh, uh, the piano and it's a nice kind of question and answer, but uh, we'll see how it goes here. Who's not reading? Uh -huh. now these centering words for all though for all who lose sight of hope adjust our perspective catch our eye and touch us risen savior with your surprising presence Spend time here and now with the risen Lord. We will see. We will see Christ when we sing together, when we study the scripture, and when we serve a stranger in need. Even when our vision grows cloudy, we can remain with Christ amidst suffering and loss. Let us remain with God's spirit until the clouds pass and our anger subsides. In Christ, God did not stay far off, but dwelt with us until we truly saw God's love. Let us remain with one another and with all of God's children until Christ unmistakably appears. Our opening hymn is verse 1 and 2 of number 92, For the Beauty of the Earth. I'll play a little introduction.
tell how many verses we were singing? It was just two. Oh. Well, I can take this off mute. Join with me in the opening prayer. Holy God, we give thanks that you often reveal yourself to be different from our expectations. When we long for the love we have known in the past, our eyes are dimmed to the beauty you reveal to us now as your first followers struggled to see how a suffering savior could be the Messiah. We strain to recognize you still today. Come, Spirit, make yourself known. In the study of the scripture, in, the song, in our songs of praise, and especially in the grace and love, we offer one another, make yourself known in every friend, we have yet to meet in you, in your good and blessed name. Amen. Our scripture today is Psalm chapter four, verse one. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. And from John chapter 3, verses... Uh, actually, Susan, Susan, it's, it's all of Psalm 4 and then 1 John. Wow. Well, just tell her you didn't copy it off. So. I don't have 1 John, so I will... You have, have John. I don't have 1 John. So I have the wrong scripture copied off. Does someone have a Bible that can read that? I've got it. I can do it. Okay. Sorry about that. I thought I copied it right That's off. okay. It's all right. Psalm 4. Pastor Michelle, Answer I can read me. it. That's okay. I've got it. Thank you. Answer me when I call, O God, of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O oh Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace for you alone, O oh Lord, make me lie down in safety. And from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed... We will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. 
This is a word from God for God's people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you so much, Susan. As you heard earlier already that um, this is Native American Ministry Sunday, and I'm doing a combination on honoring creation and then talking some about Native American life issues, different pieces, and who we are to be in the world. It's one of the reasons I put up this particular background of the fruit trees in uh, Walla Walla, because it spoke to me about creation. From Genesis 1, 26 through 31a, then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God, they were created, male and female. They were created. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. And fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, Everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that was made, and indeed, it was very good. This coming Thursday, April 22nd, will be the 51st anniversary of Earth Day. Will we notice? Will we as a congregation or as individuals do anything to honor the earth or creation? As human beings, we, create, we generate a lot of trash. We use items that don't decompose and will be around for hundreds to thousands of years into the future. 
what are we doing to honor God's creation? That creation that God said is good. When Earth Day first started back in 1970, the big concerns were zero population growth and the belief that the Earth was getting colder. People were asked to have no more than two children, for that would set the population at a maintenance level. And it was certain that within 30 years, which would have been the year 2000, 21 years ago, that the average temperature around the globe would drop so far that it would be the beginning of a new ice age. <laughs> My, how things have changed. As for zero population growth, we have evidence through multiple television programs about people having well beyond two children. I mean, seriously, what kind of TV show would you have with just two children? What happened to the idea of maintaining, not multiplying, the population? As for the coming ice age, we now have an even greater fear of global warming. In just 50 years, we have gone from the fear of the planet freezing to death to the fear of the planet dying from too much heat. To complicate all of that, we are scientifically already in an ice age and have been for 2.5 million years. And to get technical, this part of the ice age is considered interglacial. That is, between the times when glaciers cover the planet. And I guess we can be grateful for that. But in all of this, it's difficult to know what our response should be. We heard from Genesis 1, God saw everything that God had made, and indeed it was very good. Of all God's creations, we are the ones God expected to take care of things. Other parts of creation are here to tend only to themselves. But we as humankind were given dominion over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. All things in the water and sky and all things that grow and yield our daily food. We're given dominion over other creatures and are told to subdue the earth by our population. Be fruitful and multiply. Well, we've certainly accomplished that, haven't we? we? Are we so focused on subduing and having dominion that we forget we are also to be stewards of this earth? To be a steward means to take care of something that doesn't belong to us. To care for something on behalf of someone else. If we're caring for this world for someone else, who is that someone else? We are stewards on behalf of God and those future generations of humans and other animals living on this green and blue globe. They are the ones we should be thinking of and caring about. When I was in South Carolina a number of years ago, my friend and I drove up to the YMCA camp north of Greenville. There's an open chapel that looks out over the Blue Ridge Mountains. Around the perimeter of this chapel is a wall with plaques dedicated to the memories of loved ones who had been a part of that camp. One of the plaques had a message adapted from the writing of Louis L'Amour. It read, we must never forget that the land and the waters are entrusted to us for the moment only. That following generations must live from that land and drink of that water. It is not enough just to leave something for them. As God's stewards, we must leave it all better than we found it. What are we doing to leave it all better than we found it. Many churches have recycling programs where they recycle inkjet cartridges, aluminum cans, and reading materials. Are we doing any of that? 
either of our churches as, as a church community or as individuals. I must admit that Baker County isn't the best for recycling. I miss being able to throw all my paper into a bin and then take it to a bigger bin for recycling or set it out on the curb and have it picked up by the recycling people. Here, unless I shred it first, a lot of paper just becomes trash. Plastic is a terrible substance that doesn't break down, but we have it in so many different forms. Again, here in Baker County, plastic mill cartons can be recycled, and there are other plastics with deposits which would prompt us to return them. But what about medicine bottles or plastic food containers? One of the churches I, I just served re, um, sent medicine bottles to a group in Ohio that then sent them out to third world countries where they might have medicine, but nothing to contain that medicine. So it's a good way to re, reuse the medicine bottles. Trash. We have so much trash. And it doesn't feel good to me. We are a wasteful people around the globe. And it can be difficult knowing how to make a difference. I heard a story a couple of years ago about Germany. The man telling the story had been a teacher there for several years. And he was explaining how everything got recycled. All products were sorted and recycled properly. And if the garbage co company caught someone not doing it or not doing it right, throwing away things that should have been recycled, that person would get fined. Talk about being proactive. How did we get here? How did we lose compassion for the earth and for the people who will follow us? Maybe we who are of Western European descent never actually had that compassion. Maybe we were always of a mind to take and not give back. Which brings me to my second topic for today, Native American Ministry Sunday. Within the United Methodist Church, there are six Sundays during the year in which we are called to focus our ministry and thoughts and donations outside the local church and into the greater world. This Sunday is the only one that focuses on a specific ethnic group, Native Americans. I grew up in a world of many Native Americans. In California, there are 107 federally recognized tribes. In my home county, there were three large tribes and many, many more within the surrounding counties. Yurok, Karuk, Talawa, Hoopa, Klamath, and Weot, to name a few. Being in the midst of Native of Americans, excuse me, Native Americans is part of my heritage. The two foster boys my family took in over the years were both from local tribes. When I was in grade school, I remember learning about the Yurok's and the Karuk Indians who lived to the south. But I was so surprised to learn long after I graduated from high school that most of my friends were of the Talawa tribe, which lived to the north. The Talawas were not recognized as a tribe by the federal government until 1983, more than 100 years after the massacre in my home county that was thought to have killed them all off. And no, I didn't learn about that in school either. God gave the world to humankind for us to tend and cultivate and love. The Native Americans valued the land above all else. They had no concept that anyone could own land. It wasn't a commodity that could be bought or sold. It belonged to the creator. By whose good pleasure, we were allowed to reside on it. So it must have come as quite a shock for these people to be moved from their sacred places by people who would work to destroy the natural harmony of the earth. 
Native Americans honored the buffalo and the deer, the tree and the water, and would ask forgiveness of an animal or a tree before causing its death. There is such beauty in being so connected to the land that each blade of grass and every bird in the air is given sacred value. Sadly, in the white European understanding of subduing the earth and having dominion, non-white people were considered no better than the animals and could be used and killed like any other creeping thing that creeps on the earth. There seems to be no limit to the abuses we humans can perpetrate on creation, including created human beings. Instead of recognizing the indigenous people as having been here longer and learning from their connection with the earth, we destroyed them. The very first church I served in California was part of a cooperative parish of three United Methodist churches, one of which was served by a Native American pastor. This church is just a few miles outside the Klamath River Indian Reservation. Michael the pastor, was a gentle, soft-spoken man who once explained the famous phrase, it is a good day to die. So often we think of that phrase as meaning the people are ready to go to battle, and if they must die fighting for their home, then it is a good day to die. However, the way Michael explained it, it was more about being in harmony with the earth. God is in the heavens. We are people who who have lived well. We are surrounded by beauty. Indeed, it is a good day to die, for we are at peace within our souls. Although we can't make up for the things that have happened in the past, we can take a stand to assure that it doesn't happen again or continue to happen. As we look at the earth and the many ways it has been corrupted, we must include all the people who have suffered at the hands of others. As we consider Earth Day and Native American Ministry Sunday, let us look at our stewardship of all of creation, creeping beasts, growing plants, and God's most beloved creation, people. Stewardship of God's creation doesn't stop at the level of caring for the ground beneath our feet or of the many animals that surround us. Our stewardship extends to our neighbors in humankind. Care for the widows and orphans, the homeless and the lost, the displaced and disheartened, people of color who are systematically abused and killed. We are all part of God's great body, and we need to participate in the restoration to health and harmony. Speak for justice, work for equality, and give to those agencies that are doing these good works on our behalf. It is a good day to die, and it is a good day to come alive again with all our sisters and brothers. It's time to give back. Take care of creation, all of creation. For God saw everything that God had made, and indeed, it was very good. Amen. As we consider ways that we can give back, remember that the special Sundays of the church are days where we receive offerings for whatever particular Sunday it is. Money received that is specified for Native American ministries will go to the Native American ministries of the greater United Methodist Church. Offering our gifts to God is a holy act. In this sacred moment, let us offer our gifts and our lives 
to the holy work of God. Let us spend a moment in prayer. And join me in our offertory response. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God, all the be heavenly hosts. Creator, Savior, Holy Ghost. Amen. And join with me in our offering prayer. Living God, you give us the greatest gift of all, the gift of new life. Grateful for this gift, we bring our offerings, the works of our hands. Use our gifts to share your word of hope, your promise of forgiveness, and your blessings with all creation. Grateful for your love, we offer ourselves that we might walk with our neighbors into your garden of love. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 437, This Is My Song. Play a little introduction. My sisters and brothers, as you go forth into the world at whatever distance you are capable, 
remember that this is the world we have been given to cherish, to tend, to care for. We are not to be scattering trash. We are not to be abusing other people. We are here to tend and care and make this a better place. Go in the peace and love of God, knowing that God has called on us to tend to this world. And the people of God said, Amen.